This YouTube video is part of something big. How big? Well, if you were to watch all the videos that get uploaded to YouTube in one day, by the time you finish watching, the year will be 2081. 400 hours of video are uploaded every minute. That's like watching over 184 movies. And it might not be as impressive, but for about a year now, Lo and I have been going behind the scenes at Google and making YouTube videos about all the stuff we're curious about. And so of course, we wanted to know, how does YouTube actually work? So we tracked down a few YouTube engineers and got them to tell us. There's just way too much cool stuff for one video, so we made two. Part one, which you're watching now, is what happens when you upload a video. In part two, we find out what happens when you play a video. But for now, keep watching and we'll get into uploading. Any kind of video that ever comes from any random camera that has ever been produced has shown up in our system. And that means a bunch of different file types, resolutions, and formats. And it's YouTube's job to make all these different videos playable. On every possible device, for every possible user, in every part of the world. We basically take all of the video that you have upload it into YouTube and take it from a whole series of random video formats and then convert it into something that YouTube players can watch. Why not just let people watch the original upload? You might have given us a video that's really great quality, looks wonderful, mm -hmm. but it's so big that I can't distribute it to anybody. Meaning if YouTube tried to let you play that video, it could cause constant buffering or melt your phone. Or if every video that everyone ever tried to watch was that big, you could break the internet, and that's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to not break the internet, YouTube does something called processing. Let's say you upload a video to YouTube. The first thing we do is start looking at it to figure out how we're going to make it smaller. We'll examine the video, try and understand what's the resolution, what's the frame rate, and then we'll generate what we call a mezzanine. In other words, a high quality copy of your video. That lets us carve it up into chunks. About five seconds each and then pass each chunk off to a different machine and have that machine process just this little piece of video. And then we'll run it through some math and generate a compressed version of that. And this happens again and again and again, making smaller and smaller versions of these five second chunks. And then all of these corresponding chunks get stitched back together. We'll generate maybe 25 different video outputs depending on the resolution of the input coming in. So if you've uploaded a 4K video and someone has an HD TV, they could watch the 4K version. Or if you're just a sloth in the middle of the jungle with sloth speed internet, there's still a smaller version that you can also watch. But how does YouTube actually make all these smaller versions of your original video? Well, this is where this video is gonna get kind of technical, but we promise if you stick with us, we'll make it worth your while. When people talk about media files, you might hear the word codec. And codec is sort of a jargon shorthand for compression and decompression. And using a bunch of clever math can shrink a file down to make it much smaller. You can get you know, hundreds of times smaller without any visual loss in quality just because that's the way our brain sees things. We learned that cameras can actually capture so many more details than we humans are able to visually perceive. So video codecs are all about simplifying the video down into what's most important and what we'll actually notice. Before you compress a video, you can think about it as just a bunch of dots. But sometimes these dots are similar and compression technology is like, I see what's going on here and I have a solution. So you can say this pixel is like that pixel and that's where all of that savings comes from. You're watching this video later on, you're gonna see there's a bunch of background that's not changing, but there's other parts that are changing. So all the stuff that doesn't change doesn't need to keep getting refreshed with each new frame, which shrinks the file size. So if I'm doing something surprising like, like this all around that, does that like... <laughs> when you dance around and move, is it yeah. fabulous? And do you make it hard for the codec? <laughs> totally. <laughs> the answer is absolutely yes. Sorry, codec. I'm really sorry. <laughs> like all things technological, transcoding isn't always perfect. So Steve and his team run experiments, asking people to watch videos and rate what looks best to them. And then YouTube takes all the results from these tests and fine tunes its algorithms to match what people like the most. Which also helps reduce compression artifacts like banding and blocking. A sunset is a great example of something where you'd see banding. So something that should be a nice smooth gradation of colors or brightness will turn into separate little chunks and you'll see bands across it. Blocking in comparison is the obvious one. We compress everything into these macro blocks or, or into individual pieces. Part of what we're trying to do 
is smooth out the differences to make it as clean as possible. And because a YouTube video is more than just the video itself, every time you upload, YouTube is also finding the best thumbnail options for you. And recognizing speech in order to generate automatic captions. And using machine learning to help figure out what's going on in your video that can make it more searchable. And math and computers and coding is crazy because this is happening for thousands of videos every single second. How do you think about the size of YouTube? On one hand, in the history of things, YouTube is among the most popular things ever. But in the end, what YouTube is about is about connecting an individual or a small group of people with an individual or a small group of people. So as the number of people in the world watch YouTube grows and the amount that YouTube gets consumed grows, that intimate connection never changes. It really is just about this like person-to-person -person connection. So thanks for watching this video. If you're interested, check out part two about what happens when you play a YouTube video. And if you dig what we're doing, subscribe, because we really like breaking down technology, and we hope you do too. And also dancing. Compression dance. Ooh, these dance moves are so hard to compress. <laughs> Deal with that, YouTube. <laughs>